In this part, we're going to be working on creating the textures that we'll need for the particle system so that we can recreate this Moogle Shop base effect in the next part when we assemble everything together. So the unique textures that we haven't actually created yet in any tutorial include these stars, these rising flares, and this base with the green and purple kind of sprite that's just spinning around. As for the caustics, we've done that in another tutorial, as well as these little round dots, which are easy to make, but we've also covered them in another tutorial as well, so we're not going to be recreating them again. So let's start with the base of this effect, and it's probably the quote-unquote hardest part, and that's the, the base right here with the purple and green outlines. So we're going to recreate this texture by first creating a 512 by 512 document in Photoshop. We're going to create a new layer, go to View, New Guide Layout just so we can have a good breakdown of the canvas. We're going to go to Lips Tool, and while holding Shift, which will help it snap everything, we're just going to drag it so that it covers the entire entire canvas. So we can toggle the, the guides with Control H and we're going to go ahead and mask this effect using another shape so that we get a crescent for the for the outline for the like the, the outlines on the two corners. So to do that again go back here, draw another circle like so and set its kind of I guess combo to subtract from the front shape. And then this actually has to be drawn on top of this so we have to be careful. There we go, and let's see, subtract from the front shape, and there we go. So now we can set up a crescent really easily by just scaling this. So let's set this to the end like that, and then maybe scale this up a little bit, reposition it, like so. And I think that's that's not too bad. And we got a crescent like that, so we can delete this accidental layer that I created. We're going to maybe look at this again, and create another ellipse on a new layer that's about that big. Right, so it fits one cell in, and that's going to be, I guess, the main part. And then we're going to shrink this down so that it fits on one corner. So something like, something like that, right? Then we can color it, let's say, you know, color it uh, green first, I guess. Doesn't really matter, something like that. And then we can duplicate this and flip it horizontally so that's on the other side and then we can color this one purple instead so let's see what the color looks like in, in this so it's about that sort of purple right so it's something like this we can also just maybe crank this up I might need to crank this one up as well maybe make this a bit bluer because I think that's what the shade is like and let's see let's put this back here down here and Actually, instead of a stroke, or instead of a fill, we can take the fill off and maybe stroke it. Right, there we go. And, yeah, so let's blur this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's set it to, I don't know, 10 for now. And then this one as well, let's blur this as well. So, filter, Gaussian blur. Not the channel. Okay. And let's see, let's take the guide off so we can just kind of see what's happening here. So this is probably too... Something like that's probably better. Okay, so that's looking good. And let's group these together and mask them. And then maybe with a pretty thick brush like that, we can hold and drag down to erase the, the parts in the center or something. Let's do that again so it's properly done. That's better. Okay, so now it's even. This one we can also blur a tiny little bit as a smart object. Like that. And the opacity down maybe. And then in the center we can just go ahead and Use the gradient tool with a radial gradient. Turn the opacity up to max. Control H to turn on the guides and then just drag it right to the end like so. And then maybe turn it down like that and recolor it to be kind of bluish. Very light blue so we can always recolor it a tiny bit more once we get inside Unity. Blur this. Add a bit more. And then we can also move these to the edges some more. 
like so. And I think that's a pretty good approximation of this texture. So you can go ahead and save that out. Just take the background, save that out as a PNG, and that concludes that effect. So the next texture we'll work on is for the stars, right? So that's again going to be a new 512 by 512 document, like so. And this is where it actually gets a little bit weird and tricky. So we're going to first do a quick outline of what the final effect will be like. So for that, I'm just going to, again, create a new guide layout, same distribution, 8x8, eight and maybe something like here, 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 and here, and like here. So we got this outline, so we'll just draw right inside this as a sketch on a new layer. Something like that, just as a, as a quick guide, right? It doesn't have to be actually that good. And maybe just turn this way down, then go back here, actually create the, the shape using the pen tool. So something like this, right? Hit Alt on this so it doesn't... Something like that. Alt actually destroys the second tangent so we get a sharp curve. And uh, yeah, that's not too bad, I guess. And we can now actually fix it up so it doesn't look so insane. So hold control and then you can just mess with the, the points like that. Distribute it a bit more evenly. Right. And basically just start fixing it up however you want. So I'll make this a bit more round. This. Maybe not like that much, but... And this doesn't have to be too precise because either way, there's actually a little bit of charm in the imperfections that you might have. But, you know, don't make it too ugly looking either. So we're not going to tweak this too much, but just a little bit, something like that to show you how you can quickly start making it a bit better and more evenly formed. Like this one is just doesn't match the, the length of this. So that's, that's a bit better. That's not too bad. So we'll go with this. Actually, you know what? Maybe a little bit more tweaking. Okay. Okay, that's actually acceptable. So we'll go something like this. So we went from this, right, to this, and now we're going to start coloring it. So sometimes in Unity, you want to keep a grayscale, and sometimes you want that extra detail. So for example, you can see this one ha has a little bit of a gradient that goes inward, and it's just nice to have that detail, which you may miss on um, if you just have a pure grayscale texture. And in this case, it's not so bad because... Again, it's just a gradient, right? So that can be grayscale and it won't really matter, but if you want to preserve some details, it's sometimes better to just do a full-on color texture rather than a grayscale, just like we did for the base, right? So you can't really color it like this in Unity without using a special shader, and that's why we did it in color rather than grayscale. But if you did want to do it in grayscale, you could easily just go here and add in this uh, black and white filter adjustment layer, and this already has the correct luminance values, so... You can also desaturate it, but with the correct luminance values, you preserve some of the, the highlights better, like that. So if you want to render it out just without color, you can do it that way. This one, we're going to be doing it in color as well. So let's go to color overlay, set it to something like a light yellow, you know, something like your teacher might give you in a sticker. Something like, something really light like that. And then we'll do inner shadow, set it to normal, something like an orange color. I already have it, uh, I guess, set up. So we can just kind of drag it in a little bit, change the opacity. Actually, that seems fine. So that's not looking too bad. Then we'll start working on a little bit of the highlights. So for that, we can go select the paintbrush. I'm going to use something like this one. Uh, I don't know if this, sh this should be included with the Photoshop. I don't remember installing anything special for it. So we're just going to quickly do something like this without paying too much attention to it. And that looks pretty cool on its own. But now we'll just actually blur it out a bunch, maybe like that much. Maybe shrink it in as well, just a tiny bit. Like that, and now we can color it as well. So something more orangey, like that, but then lighter as well. So 
something just barely you know, like that. Maybe actually blur it a bit more. We just want a very uneven kind of glow to it. And we can also add some highlights just to add a bit more detail. So for that, we can just use a regular soft brush and maybe do something like this, right? Not like that, but like struggling to uh, hold my mouse steady. Something like that. Set it to maybe, actually maybe blur it a little bit more. And then we can set it to a yellowish sort of tint. So color overlay, right, yellow. Rasterize the layer style, and then set it to linear dodge add. We can just have sort of like a highlight going on. And I think that's good enough. Again, you can, you can tweak the shape. We're going to add some glow a little bit more. Now that I think about it, that would probably be nice. These settings aren't too bad. This gives it a really nice hot glow. And then, yeah, you can just save that out as a PNG. And again, if you wanted to make it black and white, just go ahead and select this and uh, yeah, that's good to go. And then the final texture we're going to be working on is for these flares, right? So you can see what this looks like. It's kind of like this uh, little slit that kind of opens up and then quickly becomes sharp again. So for that, back into making another 512 by 512 document in Photoshop. New layer, you know the drill by now, right? So new guide layout. And we're going to zoom in real close. Again, go to use the pen tool. This one can be a little bit tricky. So let's start out right here, maybe. Something like here. And then like this. Then here. And then we can close it off, right? So we have a full, complete shape. Make sure these settings, by the way, are active. Otherwise, we'll get some one of these other things instead. Maybe just mess around with the that right there. So this should be like so. so something like that is a bit better. Okay, so Control J, this, duplicate it, and then flip it horizontally, then assemble it like there. Okay, and then select this one, Control G to group them, Control J to duplicate. And then flip them again, this time vertically, and then put that down there. So we got our little slit going on, right? So you can see what it looks like. It's a little bit messed up there because I didn't properly shape it correctly, but it's not a big deal at this point because we're going to be blurring it a little bit later on, or very soon anyways. So we'll group these together, right? So we have our little slit, and we'll duplicate it, put it underneath like that, and we're now going to stretch it out a ton on the width, maybe turn the, turn the height down, and you can see what that looks like, right? So there's our little slit. Then we're going to control E to rasterize both. Maybe blur this one a tiny little bit. And blur this one as well. A little bit more than that one. Like so. Right, so you just have to find a proper balance, I guess. And then we've got a little bit glow around, a little bit of a glow around it as well. So for that, we can just easily, first of all, let's select this. Let's see, an outer glow. That might work, but this one should be white. Something very soft like that. You might not, you might not even be able to see it with YouTube compression, but it's, it's just barely there. And it'll show up once you use uh, an additive material in Unity. And I think that's about it. So again, take out the background, save it as a PNG, and you're good to go. So those are all the textures I think that we'll need. The other textures, like the caustic texture, these little dots, we created in other tutorials, and I'll leave a link to those tutorials in the description so you can check them out as well. And yeah, we can move on to the next part and start assembling our particle systems. See you soon.